Hey there, folks. This is Lucifer Lake of Warden coming back at you with another video. First off, let me address the wild hair. I haven't had a chance to do it up yet. Um, it's my day off. I'm relaxing on, I'm chilling out at home, getting ready to go out and cook some steaks on the grill when I get a package in from my buddy, uh, Adam, up in Wisconsin. Now, this guy, he used to be a Cult of Cthulhu member. He's left. He's now running the Temple of the Old Ones group along with a few other people. And, um, and right now he's messaging me uh, right now uh, because I just got in a package from him. And um, he was looking to get rid of this book because, well, it was pissing him off. The uh, whole thing that went on with him and Winter Waitley uh, from the Cult of Cthulhu has just been pissing him off, and he sent me his copy of the Order of Dagon, a, uh, of the Cult of Cthulhu, a guide and field book to scientific magic. Now, I took a quick look through this thing, and I have it actually page marked for a very specific reason, and I'm going to show that to you. Um, I've looked through it already. I've just had it. He mailed it out like yesterday, and I just got here today. That was really fast postal shipping. It was like overnight to me. Um, let me make this very clear. You see where this page is? So here's the top of the book. And this is all the usable, well, not even that. From here, yeah, from here onward, here is all the usable content of the book. Not a joke. The rest of the book, from here on back, is a journal. Just blank-paged journal. And then there, at the back of the book, there is like a dozen blank padding pages. Now, as a person who publishes books myself, I do a lot of self-publishing and I've had to learn the tips and tricks of publishing. These blank pages at the back of the book, they're all just fluff. They're all just padding. As far as this book goes, there is a little bit of written content here, but as you go on, it's just, it's a journal. That's all it is on the back end. This is all that is usable. And then you have all this fucking extra fluff on the beginning of the book. This book was supposed to be, the way that it was marketed and whatnot, it was supposed to be the Cult of Cthulhu's, the official Cult of Cthulhu's, answer to the satanic rituals. It was supposed to be their response to the black grimoire by me. All right, now, first off, you look at their usable section right here. Generally, that right there. This is their usable section. Compare that to mine. Okay, I don't have any extra fluff pages in mine. The page count is about the same, which is fine. You can do the same with the red grimoire. It is fine. There is nothing wrong with only having this much content for a ritual book. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. But when you pat, when you seek to pat out a book with all this extra fluff there is something seriously wrong why does this book need so much extra fluff why could you not take what you have here as extra fluff and make a specially designed order of dagon field journal separate where people buy it expecting it to be a journal book and not marketing it as a ritual book. 
This right here is actually a ripoff. I am glad I did not pay any money for this. Hang on, I'll be right back. My apologies. I heard voices right outside my house there. And yeah, I had to make sure nobody was on the property. I'm glad I didn't buy this. Thank you, Adam, for sending this to me uh, and saving me money. Do I recommend people get this book? Well, if you're reading through the Cult of Cthulhu's primary book, The Bible of Cthulhu, which, again, is, from what I understand, a ripoff of Venger Satanus' books, you might find some of this handy. But don't be expecting it to be an actual ritual book. I've skimmed through some of the pages, and a lot of it feels like it's very circle talk. Now, let me go into some of the details and nuances of this book that I understand from Adam himself. He wrote part of this book. As a matter of fact, 50% of the written part is his work, from my understanding. It is not actually completely Winter's work. From my understanding, Winter also took from the Necronomicon, which I actually do have a complete series over here there of the Necronomicon. And Winter took from several other sources to put into this thing as extra fluff. He actually may not have written very much for this book. He may have reworded a few things, put things into his wording, and that's about it. I have advised Adam to go ahead and file a cease and desist order um, on Winter to get the production of this book stopped because his part, he can rescind, he can legally rescind his authorization to use his writing in this book and he can take back that part of the writing, which would, I think you might be left with something like that and whatnot, a bare bones manuscript and a bunch of fluff to pad it out. Let me, uh, let me explain something to you. There is nothing wrong with having a ritual book this big. Yeah, that's not thick. It's easy reference, you can get in, you can be right in on the rituals really quick. I don't have a lot of artwork in my books and whatnot, and people don't have a problem with that. One of the really cool things about Winter's books was you had a lot of really cool, really nifty and pretty artwork in it. You know, along with some really well done, just overall themes. But one thing that I know is that artwork like this, that's filler content. That is all filler content. If you took all the artwork out of this book, you're probably reducing the size of it down significantly. Um, you take a look at my books, such as the Satanic Testament, third edition, over 500 pages, very little artwork in this book. Um, the vast majority of the artwork is at the section beginnings and it's just usually something like that. Um, you'll also find art in the beginning of the book. And there is one other bit of art near the back of the book. If I can find it. I'm not even finding it right now. Yeah, that just tells you on how little artwork there is in here. 
and each of the different sections has a little symbol of art, but that's about the most art that you'll find in my book. And I'll tell you one thing, you open up my book, oh look, a blank page, not a problem. There's another blank page, but now we start getting into writing. And from this point onward, there is something on every single page until you get to the end of the book. Oh, look, blank page. Oh, look, writing immediately. No fluff. Let's look at this one. We open it up, we'll look, blank page. All right, we got all right. It says first edition. A lot of empty space here. More empty space, a little bit more writing. Another blank page. Written and designed by Winter. Well, is that 100% true? Well, this isn't even fully lined up. This is bad. That's bad printing right there. No, that's not Winter's fault. That's whoever it was. Oh, look, more blank page. More blank page. Okay, so now we're we're coming into the contents of the book right here. We've got on and off blank pages for this entire beginning segment. Okay, let's take a look at the back back of the book. Oh, blank page, blank page. Blank page, blank page. Oh, finally we come to a part that we're supposed to be able to write in. You got all that fluff at the back of the book. This is a waste of paper. Trees had to die to make this. Yeah, and we got all of this, which is just journal shit. You could you could have made a specific book that was specifically a journal for the amount of writing that is in this section. What is this? An entire an entire uh, note section for a single line. What is that? Now, mind you, <laughs> can't even use this note section. Because again, you got lines. Now mind you, this says that there is a disclaimer in the beginning. Disclaimer. The exploration of this manual and the subsequent use of the field book thereafter should only be carried out by those who have read the Bible of Cthulhu. Without the fundamental foundations provided in the Bible, this tome will only prove to be bewildering, partial, or ineffectual to those uninitiated. The Order of Dagon exists exclusively for the members of the Cult of Cthulhu. Well, I've skimmed through the damn thing. I've also read the Bible of Cthulhu, and I'm going to tell you as a person having read the original source material as recommended. This book right here is not worth your money. I would not pay money for this. If I had actually bought this and gotten this in, I would have been pissed. I would have been completely pissed off. just more on and off blank pages going all the way to here this is where the actual book book begins i mean it has one whole thing title title of what are we supposed to write in this and make a title for ourselves and look we got another blank page on the back there is so much wasted void space here 
as, as a guy who publishes books, who writes them, who publishes them, who edits them, I am horrified by the amount of void space that is in this book. And even after the title section, let me, let me come here. You've got, the book doesn't actually begin to actually become usable. Oh, we got a glossary of terms. Okay, so we got a glossary of terms. Now we come to abstract title and then abstract. This, this book doesn't really become usable until what? The second chapter, which has another preface with, looks like another uh, preface. And then it goes to another chapter. Oh, now we're starting to come into things. The archetypes of the arcane. So we've gone through two whole sections of this book of wasted space before we come to something usable. And this picture is completely blurry. I can see uh, what is going on with the double lining here. I don't know if you can see that right there, but it is completely misprinted out of visual. I mean, I showed you that one misprint in the beginning, but holy shit. But we have artwork, okay. Oh, is that it? The archetypes of the arcane is three things that don't even mention Cthulhu. We have Dagon, the Hydra, and the Deep Ones, and they don't even get a piece of artwork. And then we come to the introduction. Are you kidding me? Now we're starting to, it looks like it gets into the meat and potatoes of the actual book. How much wasted space was that before we actually got to the actual book. So we get to introduction and that's where the actual meat and potatoes of the book starts up. We get several false starts. We think that the deep one section is actually a good, is the startup of the book. It turns out that's just another false start so before we actually get to what appears to be the meat and potatoes of the book, we're left with this much of actual content and this much of beginning fluff and false starts. I'm sorry, that's just very poor book design to me. Being a person who has written and designed and published multiple books. I mean, this isn't even all the books I've written, designed, and published. It's just three out of my entire collection. I have a fiction novel. I have one more book in this series. I have two other editions of this. And on top of that, I, I write for and publish fucking um, The Cloven Hoof. And we look at Avengers book. Very simple, very slim. Both of his books, very simple, very slim. And if I open up Avengers book here, Okay, we have a starting blank page. 
blank on both sides. Okay, one blank page in the beginning is usually pretty customary. Same on the end. Okay, all right. That's only one, but look. There's a uh, picture Avenger right there. And pretty good content all the way through. From here, it is just this. Then we get into the main book right here. And again, pretty good content all the way through. Okay, we have a good copyright page with acknowledgments. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. Not a lot of fluff there. Very slim book, Liber AO. We got a blank page, another blank page. All right, kind of sitting here going like, eh. Okay, what, what, what was going on here? But immediately getting into the main portion of the book, we have one more blank page. Boom, boom. Writing almost very quickly in the book. And pretty solid, again, pretty solid content most of the way through. There is some blank pages again at the end. I think that's a printing thing going on here. Uh, this comes from Lulu, I will say. And Lulu or Amazon. But we look through it and yeah, he's got some pages that have a lot of white in them. But he still makes it very worth the while. I can't really argue too much about Winter's original book. You got one blank page in the beginning. Yeah, you get pretty quickly into some content. And overall, good design. What happened? Where did we go from here to this mess? That's what I got for you guys today. Thank you, Adam, for sending me this. And as far as the content of the book that is yours, you can rescind your permission to Winter to use your written content and force him to remove the book from the market uh, and whatnot. Um, considering that half of that book is yours, what usable part there is, you can remove that segment and then republish on your own. That is your technical right. This is coming from a guy who writes and publishes and has an understanding of copyright law. You can rescind your permissions and whatnot, and you can do so. I would recommend sending the cease and desist order to him um, and telling him, look, you cannot use my content in your book anymore. If you continue to do so, I will see you in court. Now, that's not saying you're going to win in court, but it's going to definitely cost some serious money considering he's in Australia, you're in America, da 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 You do the mathematics there. So, my recommendation with the Order of Dagon, a field guide book for scientific magic. Is this book worth buying off the Cult of Cthulhu website? For the price that they have it listed for? No. That is not just me saying that because I have any sort of axe to grind with Winter. Uh, I'm pretty angry about all the shit that went down, yes. But this is coming from a publisher, editor, author standpoint that... This is a ripoff of the customer's money. This is not a book that is worth getting. Um, there is very difficult to read fonts in this book. This is a very swirly font. I'm, I love using fonts. I love using stylized fonts. But one of my rules is, is if a person cannot read what is written in the font... Um, you shouldn't be using it. And I understand that uh, Winter likes to use a Cthulian-based font, but this is not Cthulian-based. This is an English-based font. 
Um, and you can see right here how horrible, horribly nightmarish it is to try to read all of that with all the swirls overlapping each other. Um, it doesn't even look like it's supposed to be proper handwriting. Um, it would have been better off in just some sort of typewriter font right there. And there is some Cthulian based font work that Winter likes to use. All this is is a font and if you learn <coughs> I'm going horse here. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> if you learn how to read that from the Bible of Cthulhu, you can read it fairly easily. <clears throat> if not, you are going to be just staring at it going, wood. Which is fine. That was the whole purpose of it. <clears throat> Pardon me. I've been going off for almost 30 minutes, so I'm getting a little hoarse here. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. No, I do not recommend buying this book. No, I do not think it is worth your money. Not for what is being put into it. Not for the mismanagement of it. Not for the printing quality. And not for all the freaking fluff in it. There is so many fluff pages. Cripes, I look like Albert Einstein. Um, there is so many fluff pages in this book that it is absolutely ridiculous. And then there is some very difficult fonts to read, um, which again, I have no problem with using fanciful fonts in appropriate places. I love doing font work because, you know, making letters look great and awesome, 3D'd out and metallic, liquid, whatever, just, if done right, can really enhance a, 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 an image, a book title, or whatnot. Um, you can actually see that when I use the Black Grimoire font work. Um, this is all metallic out and bumped out, and then it is contrasted with a red background to bring it out into the fore. And it looks really great. I did the same thing for the red grimoire in reverse and I made it look golden and all this other stuff to bring that out to the forefront and it looks great and it's this wonderful stylized pop, but you can still read it and that's the main thing even when we look on the back I use stylized fonts and it looks good so I have no problem with using stylized fonts um, to bring out a book. We look at the Satanic Testament. Okay, so we see that, I, again, I use stylized fonts. I metallic it out. I use a fade shift to it, and it looks really good. This might be a better way to see that. So, yeah. But what he's got going on here, he's using a very difficult font to read, and he's done nothing to make it easier to read. That's not good. He's got a lot of fluff padding at the beginning and end of the book, several pages worth, a lot of blank spaces. And then what he's done is he's taken a book that, in all honesty, he could have just taken this section of the book right here, published that, and then taken this section and created a field notebook separate. And it would have been much more worth the time and money and effort instead of putting them all together to and then marketing it as something that it's not. This was marketed as a ritual book, as a source of magic and whatnot, as something much greater than what it was. Literally, when I opened up the package and I saw how thick it was, I was expecting much, much more. And then getting into it and seeing what it was, I was like, what? 
this is a money grab. That's all this is, is a money grab. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Is this something that you would want to spend money on? I personally would not recommend it. Until then, like, share, subscribe. You know the routine. Um, don't forget to go to the STS website, pick up a copy of the Cloven Hook while you're at it. And until then, my name's Lucifer Lake of Orden. I'm really disappointed. And I'm out of here.